here's your news for December 20th, 2019. We are kicking off with some huge news about WrestleMania 36, as the showcase of the Immortals may be able to get a rated R return. According to the PW Insider, WWE Hall of Famer Edge could be returning to the ring despite it being nearly nine years since he last competed back at WrestleMania 27. The report says, We've heard that Edge signed a new deal with WWE that has a pretty nice upside. We also reported a few months ago that he was in Pittsburgh for WWE business, and that's where WWE wellness policy head Dr. Joseph Maroon is headquartered. My gut feeling is we'll see Edge in the Royal Rumble as a surprise, as that seems like the perfect place to make a big splash with a return for WrestleMania season, and possibly even see him do a few matches on major events. Having the 46-year-old former champion return at the Royal Rumble would certainly make headlines, though Mike Johnson also went on to say that Edge continues to deny any thoughts of a return to WWE as a superstar. It's hard to think that it's been over eight years since the Ultimate Opportunist last wrestled, and since then, the Rated R Superstar has only made a handful of appearances, as well as hosting the Edge and Christian show that totally reeks of awesomeness on the WWE Network. At SmackDown 1000 in October 2018, Edge was on the wrong end of a Becky Lynch verbal tirade, but did spear Elias on the SummerSlam 2019 pre-show, his first offensive move since his retirement, which sparked speculation of an in-ring return. Of course, nothing is set in stone, and the odds of Edge wrestling again are still slim, but to be fair, fans used to say the same about Daniel Bryan, who has proven that anything is possible in the WWE. Love is in the air next in WWE, as this Monday, Lana and Bobby Lashley will have their wedding live on Monday Night Raw. According to WWE.com, the plan was for the couple to wait until New Year's, but the pair couldn't wait that long, and will instead tie the knot on the final Raw of the decade. Getting married on Rusev Day, no less, the destroyer Lashley has sent out an invite via tweet to everyone, including Rusev, who has a seat saved for him, according to the groom. If you've seen any wedding in wrestling ever, you know that these ceremonies never go off without a hitch, so fans will have to wait and see whether Rusev will crash the wedding, as his on-screen divorce to the ravishing Russian is still being finalized. The wedding of Lana and Lashley isn't the only big thing happening next week, though, as according to Deadline, Roman Reigns is set to appear the next night on the Fox News New Year's Eve special in some capacity. The report by Deadline says that the show will be hosted by Family Feud star Steve Harvey and will feature a match with the big dog, though it doesn't say who he'll be facing or whether the match will be a live appearance or pre-taped. Maria Menounos and Rob Gronkowski will be hosting this part of the special, and fans may remember Menounos for her handful of matches in WWE, including a tag team bout at WrestleMania 28. Most recently, Menounos has been training with X-Pac and Sonya Deville for what she has called a secret project, and the SmackDown superstar has said Menounos is going to do great. As for Gronkowski, the retired NFL star has also been tied to WWE thanks to his friendship with Mojo Rawley, and the pair shared the ring together when Gronk helped eliminate Jinder Mahal from the WrestleMania 33 Memorial Battle Royal. While there have been rumors for a while about Gronkowski having a WWE match, perhaps fans will get some answers when the New Year's Eve on Fox show starts at 8 p.m. Eastern on December 31st. Back to the ring now, as tonight's edition of SmackDown will see the Blue Brand's tag champions compete in non-title action. On tonight's show, SmackDown tag team champions The New Day will face Intercontinental champion Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, after defeating the King of Strong Style and the Swiss Superman three weeks ago in a championship open challenge. The team of Kofi Kingston and Big E have certainly been busy lately, as they not only defeated the Revival to retain their titles in a ladder match at TLC, but also found time to sign new five-year deals with the company. According to WWE, the trio of Kingston, E, and Xavier Woods solidified a pact of identical length and compensation on their contracts to maintain equal status among the team. That's very interesting to hear, as given his career's length and recent WWE Championship win, it's possible to believe that Kingston would have been offered more than his comrades, but turned it down for his brothers. In an interview with Newsweek, Kofi said that five years is still a long way off, and though he could see himself retiring between now and then, he just doesn't know at this point in his career. 
Five years from now, Kofi will have been on WWE TV for 16 years and in the company for even longer than that, so it's easy to see why the former WWE champion could see himself hanging up his winged boots for good between now and 2024. Xavier Woods hasn't been seen on TV since undergoing surgery in October for a torn Achilles tendon, but has kept himself busy with his YouTube channel Up Up Down Down. We're looking at All Elite Wrestling next as after the latest episode of AEW Dark was recorded, a group of babyfaces and a referee laid out Sean Spears. The normal beatdown though as the group delivered stunners to the former Perfect 10 and had a beer bash on Stone Cold Steve Austin's birthday and the show took place in Texas. Just when it looked like things were winding down, AEW owner and longtime wrestling fan Tony Khan entered the fray, and after being introduced to the crowd, delivered one final stunner to Spears to send the crowd home happy. Though the crowd may have been pleased, this week's episode of Dynamite came up short against NXT in every way. December 18th was a huge night for both shows, as it was the final live show of the year and both had title matches for AEW and NXT. Showbuzz Daily reports that NXT pulled in 795,000 fans on the last show of the year, while Dynamite closed out 2019 with 683,000. Not only that, NXT also won in both the adult and younger demographics, meaning this is the first time that the gold brand has defeated the competition across the board. We'll have to wait and see what AEW can do in 2020, as they have a huge show planned for January 1st, which they have been heavily promoting. Part of NXT's success this week came thanks to Rhea Ripley, who ended the 416-day reign of Shayna Baszler to capture the gold brand's women's championship. Though the crowd was very happy about the title change and the locker room filled up the ring to celebrate, one person who wasn't so happy with the success of the Australian superstar was SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley. A former NXT Women's Champion in her own right, the former hugger called those celebrating Ripley's win sheep and gave the ominous warning that the two will meet soon. Looking ahead to WrestleMania 36, and Becky Lynch has been rumored to face Shayna Baszler, and if this match is true, then Ripley vs. Bayley would be another epic match to add to the card. That wasn't the only big appearance by Bayley this week, as the SmackDown Women's Champion recently spoke to the New York Post about her heel turn. After years as the company's lovable babyface, Bayley's turn happened back in October when she aligned herself with best friend Sasha Banks and changed her look to reflect her new attitude. In the interview, Bailey spoke about her belief that there needs to be a constant evolution in the business, saying, I need to be able to do everything and test the waters everywhere and ride the waves and challenge myself, she said. I can't get stale and bored and do the same thing over and over. In order to excel in this business, you have to constantly evolve. In that same interview, Bailey also spoke about why she felt she had to turn heel to keep her character fresh, claiming that she had gotten frustrated with her former character. I've been with WWE for seven years, so not all of it has been colorful and castle-like and wacky wavy inflatable tube men and happy and fun. It's been a struggle. It's really, really difficult to kind of stay on top for a period of time, so it's pretty easy to find frustration, believe it or not. Earlier this month, there were plans for Bayley to defend her title against Lacey Evans at the Tables, Ladders & Chairs pay-per-view, though those plans were obviously scrapped. We're looking ahead to next month, next year, and the next decade now as WWE will host their annual Royal Rumble pay-per-view on January 26th. Though the Rumble matches could include some big names, such as Edge, who we mentioned earlier, recently signed superstar Cain Velasquez is reportedly booked for the show. This news comes courtesy of the Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer, though it's currently unclear what Velasquez's role at the event will be. The former UFC star hasn't appeared on WWE TV since losing to Brock Lesnar in just over two minutes at Crown Jewel on October 31st for the Beast's WWE Championship. Kane made his WWE debut on the premiere episode of SmackDown on Fox, shocking the Beast after his championship victory in the main event of the show. Prior to his Crown Jewel match, Velasquez worked two matches with AAA Lucha Libre, and since Crown Jewel has worked one more match teaming with Humberto Carrillo at the November 30th WWE Live Super Show in Mexico City, where they defeated the OC. WWE has yet to confirm any names or matches for the Royal Rumble event, but if Velasquez does show, expect him to be the odds-on favorite to win the 30-man match. 
And finally, we're headed back to AEW Dynamite now, as while Tony Schiavone is on the show most weeks, one place fans will never hear his name is at the WWE Hall of Fame ceremony. During the latest edition of What Happened When, the former WCW commentator discussed his disdain for how WWE has treated Eric Bischoff for leaving him out of the NWO's upcoming induction next year. The legendary announcer has even instructed his family to never allow him into the WWE Hall of Fame, not even after he has died. He said, My family has been instructed that if they want to induct me in any way, post-mortem, the answer from my family is no. So don't expect me to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. You know, now I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off because Eric is not a part of the NWO into the Hall of Fame, and I'm pissed off because Eric got f***ed over by Vince McMahon. Not Bruce Prichard, who's our friend, who's a good guy, straight up guy, but by Vince McMahon. Bischoff, who has said he has made peace with the decision not to induct him with the NWO, was with the WWE earlier this year, but after a disastrous run as SmackDown executive director, was let go by the company. Part of the issue with Bischoff's tenure was that no one knew what was going on, as multiple reports came out of Bischoff missing shows and meetings, and for those he did attend, he could usually be found hiding in catering. Speaking about Bischoff's departure, Shivani didn't hold back on his criticism, saying, You know, and everybody knows that Eric was brought in just so he could get fired, and that fucking sucks. I know it, and I'll guarantee you that I'm right. And the fact that he wasn't put in the NWO Hall of Fame, into the Hall of Fame with the NWO, confirms it. Though Bischoff wasn't inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on this occasion, it's highly likely that the WCW magnate and former Raw general manager will be inducted one day though the same can't be said for Tony Schiavone.